Well, hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to give you a detailed answer to the question, what is Zojo? Zojo is for creating apps. You can use it to create apps for work or personal use. You can use it to create apps to, to give away or sell to others. If you ever thought, I wish there was an app for that, well, Zojo is great for taking those ideas and bringing them to life. If you've ever been frustrated by other development tools and languages, maybe you thought they were too complex, they were going to be too hard to learn, well, Zojo is great for that because it's very easy to learn. And if you've never written a line of code in your life, Zojo is great for that because it's easy to learn, as I said, but we also provide a curriculum that will teach you standard programming techniques that are applicable to most other programming languages as well. So who uses Zojo? Well, all kinds of people. We have students learning programming for the first time, people that just need to create an app uh, for their work, and that's across every industry you can imagine. We've got business people, researchers, law enforcement, psychologists, you name it, and there's, there's someone building an app in that area. And professional developers that are building apps inside organizations or that work at software companies that are building applications that they sell. We've got everybody in between. What does Zojo run on? Well, Zojo runs on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And what can it build apps for? Well, for the desktop, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. For the web, for the console, and I don't mean a gaming console, this is a console app, which is basically like a desktop app, but has no user interface. These are apps that are great for running in the background, running on a server, that sort of thing. On iOS, for iPhone and iPad. Apps for Android. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video, uh, we're just going into public testing with Android, but by the time you watch the video, we may already be shipping that, so check our website for details. And finally, Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi is a little computer about the size of two decks of cards. It runs Linux, and they're very inexpensive. So if you need to deploy an actual computer somewhere, uh, we support Raspberry Pi. You can build your app for it and then deploy the whole thing that way. It's a really convenient solution. Now, what about licensing? Well, Zojo is free for learning and creating your apps. You can build your entire app. In other words, you can create all the layouts. You can uh, write all the code, you can test it, debug it, etc. All of that can be done for free. You only need to buy a license when you actually need to build and deploy your application, meaning that it needs to run on some other computer. It needs to run as a standalone app. And your license provides you with all the updates for 12 months. But even after your license expires, you can keep building apps indefinitely. You only need to renew when you want to access new releases of Zojo. And there are no runtime costs. Your users don't need to purchase anything. You don't need to purchase anything for them. You just buy a Zojo license and that's all you need to build all the apps you want. Zojo is native. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means Zojo uses native user interface controls. This is important because these controls are provided by the operating system itself, which means that they take on all of the behavior, the look, the feel, etc., of the operating system controls. And that's going to be the same as all the controls that users are used to using in all their other apps. So it's important to have that consistent experience. It compiles to native machine code. There's no interpreter. You get native machine code for the platform upon which your app is running, which gives you not only optimal performance, but it also, of course, protects your intellectual property. And it builds native executables, which means the operating system will treat your app the same way it treats any other app. The best user experience, therefore, is a native one. So whatever tool you use, make sure that it's building native. So native user interface controls, let's talk about that. So all of the controls you see here, and there's a lot of them, are available for two or more project types, meaning desktop, web, mobile. Now, most of them are available for all three, but all of these are available for at least two of those. For the desktop, for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, we have even more controls. You can see them listed here. And here's an example of just some of the interface controls that are available for, uh, for desktop. In this case, it's on a Mac, and as you can see, we, can, we support dark mode. Here's that same layout on Windows. 
Again, native user interface controls. And on Linux. So one layout, and you can build for all three desktop operating systems with the same layout. Now for the web, we've got a lot of different controls as well. And you can see that a lot of these are the same controls uh, that we make available for the desktop, button, pop-up menu, etc. And they work the same way too, for the most part. Now here's that same layout, but in this case on the web. And the great thing about web apps in Zojo is you don't have to learn any of the web technologies. You don't have to learn JavaScript. You don't have to learn HTML or CSS, none of that. You just do the same thing that you do when you build a desktop app. You drag out your controls, you write your code. And as you can see here, uh, the controls take on a native look and feel for the web. They're native to the web. And in this case, we use a theming technology called Bootstrap. Uh, so if you want to get a different look and feel, you can go find a Bootstrap theme and drop it into your project or make your own Bootstrap, bootstrap theme as well. Now for mobile, we've got lots of mobile controls. And again, most of them are similar to what we have for web and for desktop. Here are some examples uh, on iOS and Android. Again, this isn't all the controls. This is just a handful of them, so you can get a feel for what they look like. Now, Zojo is an integrated development environment, or IDE for short. That means it's got a programming language. We provide a cross-platform framework, an interface builder, a code editor, a debugger, and a compiler. Let's take a look at these. First, the Zojo language. It uses a standard dot syntax. It's object oriented. If you've never done any object oriented programming before, don't worry about it. A lot of our users haven't and they start learning object oriented programming as they go, often without even realizing they're learning it. It's strongly typed and that just means that uh, when you set a variable to a specific data type, it stays that way. The syntax is similar to VB, JavaScript, and Java. If you've used any of those, you'll find it very, very familiar. It does automatic memory management via reference counting, so you don't have to worry about memory management. And if there's something you need that's not built into the uh, Zojo cross-platform framework, then you can use a declare to call into a shared library or into the operating system itself. And finally, we have a plugin SDK if you need to write plugins. Now, Zojo is an object-oriented language. That means it has classes, properties, which store data, methods, which are basically subroutines, it's event driven, so for example, a, a push button will have a, a pressed event, a list box will have a selection changed event, that sort of thing. It has constructors and destructors that run when a class is created or destroyed. It uses single inheritance and interfaces, much like Java in that case. And here's a code sample. In this code sample on the first line, we're creating a variable uh, called movie star, and it's of type uh, person. So we're making a new person object and we're calling its constructor, passing it a first name and a last name. Then we're setting a property Oscar winner to true. So it's a Boolean property. And the next property birth date is a date time. And you can see we're creating a new date time object and passing it a month, day and year. And finally, we're, we're going to add it to a row, a new row of a list box called favorites list. So we're calling add row and we're calling the full name function of the movie star object to put the full name of the movie star into the uh, into the row of the favorites list. So that's just a quick code sample. Now, Zojo is very similar or exactly the same across project types. For example, the core framework is available across all project types. That's all the stuff that's not really um, specific to the desktop or to mobile or to web. It's the things that don't involve the UI, like accessing files and communicating over the internet and things like that. User interface controls have the same or very similar APIs across all project types, which is very, very handy. And most of what you learn, therefore, about building one kind of app uh, works for other types. So if you start off with a desktop app and you want to build a mobile app, uh, you've learned a lot of what you need to know already just by learning how to build a desktop app. Now here's an example app. It's a lead tracker. You can fill in a person's name. You can indicate if they're interested or not in whatever it is you're selling and click the add button. And then that adds them to the list box below. And if the interested checkbox was checked, well, we add the little money bag emoji. 
So what you would do is you'd put some code behind the add button. Well, what would that code look like? Well, here's what the code looks like. So the, the checkbox is called is interested, and it's got a value property that indicates if it's checked or not. So if interested.value equals true, then we call uh, the add row method of the people list and pass in the text property of the name field plus the little money bag emoji. If they didn't click the checkbox, then we just call add row on people list and only pass in the text property of the name field. And at the end, we clear out the text property of the name field by setting it to quote quote so that we can be ready to type in another name. So here is the same layout on the web. And if you name the controls the same, then that exact code unaltered can be put in the add button and will work identically. Same with mobile. Even though these layouts look very different and even though they're, they're uh, native on all platforms, the code will be the same provided you give the controls the same names. Now Zojo has a cross-platform framework. So for example, when it comes to reading and writing files, uh, we support text files, binary files. You have complete access to the entire file system. That means drives that are mounted, network drives, uh, all the different special folders in the operating system, that sort of thing. And it's all cross-platform, meaning you don't need to know about the specifics of how this is done on Mac, Windows, Linux, mobile platforms, etc. You just use the Zojo API for accessing all of this, and it works across all platforms. We have support for graphics, bitmap, vector graphics. You can create PDF files, even PDF forms. And we support high DPI. We've got lots of stuff for internet communications, TCP IP, UDP, HTTP, and HTTPS, and email classes as well. So any kind of internet communications you want to do, you can do it in Zojo. We have great stuff for text and data processing. Strings, which is basically characters in Zojo, are in uh, Unicode. They're default to, they default to UTF-8, but you can use other versions of Unicode as well. We have built-in support for JSON, XML, and regular expressions. We support right-to-left text. And we've got this really cool worker class, which you can use for distributing automatically data processing jobs across multiple cores. So if you've got something that needs to process a lot of data, rather than it running on one core, it can run on all the cores that your computer provides and get the job done a whole lot faster. It's super easy to use, really, really powerful. We've got support for cryptography. For encryption and decryption, we support AES, Blowfish, RSA, and TwoFish. And for hashing, we've got SHA-1 through 3, MD5, and PBKDF2. We've got great database access. SQLite, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, and ODBC. Really, any database that you can access through ODBC. And the great thing is that it's all the same API. So whether you're writing an application to access a SQLite database or a Postgres database that's on a server somewhere, going through ODBC, whatever, you use the same API for all of these databases, which really makes it handy. The Zojo Interface Builder. Now, when you're building interfaces in Zojo, while we have interface builders for doing menus and other specialty things, it's layouts where you spend most of your time. This is an empty desktop project or a new desktop project. And it's got over on the left an app class object that represents the whole app. It's got a window called window one and a main menu bar. So I've got window one selected. We've got an empty window in the editor area in the middle. And over on the right, we have the library, which is a list of all the interface controls that can be used. And like you'd imagine, you just drag and drop to uh, create your user interface. And that list over on the right, the library list, can be configured to be just uh, icons, icons and names. There's lots of different ways you can configure it based on what you prefer. It's got a code editor. So here's the code editor for a project. In this case, it's got a, this is a desktop project with a window called main window. You can see it over on the left. It's got a button called create button. And we're in the pressed events. You can see all the code. There's little dashes down the left-hand side of the editor there where you can enter breakpoints, that sort of thing. There's also some buttons for doing things like commenting code. And you can even press that last button on the right, which looks like a sine wave, to have the compiler just quickly check this a particular method to make sure that it's all going to work when you get ready to build. The code editor supports autocomplete, 
So in this example line, uh, I'm typing the, the property type and when I got to the end there, it's showing me that there actually is a property called type info. I can just press the tab key to accept that. But if there's more than one match, it'll pop up a list like you see in the middle of the screen here. Uh, attribute info, constructor info, get type, etc. And I can just pick the one I want. Zojo has a debugger. The debugger has controls at the top for stepping in and out of code. It's got the lines down the left hand side for breakpoints. In the lower left corner, there's the stack. That's just a list of all the methods that you went through to get to this one. In this case, it's just the pressed event of a button on a window. And then over in the uh, lower right corner, there's a list of all the variables accessible to this method. And you can see their values. If they're objects, you can click on the link to the object and you can see all of its properties. In this case, we're looking at a, a variable called the class, which is a folder item. And we can see all the various properties of the folder item class that's built into uh, the Zojo framework. And you can see that some of them are objects themselves, like the creation date and creation date time. So you can click on those to drill down and, and investigate them as well. Now we also support remote debugging. This means that when you need to run the app on a different device than what you're actually doing your programming on, uh, you can do that. You can, you can run it there, but you can step through the code on your computer. So that's remote debugging. Now Zojo has a compiler. The compiler compiles to x86 and ARM machine code. It'll build 32-bit and 64-bit apps. It's an optimizing compiler. So that means the compiler will make your code run as fast as it can. And you've got three modes, default, moderate, and aggressive. We use LLVM as the back end of our compiler for most project types. This is the same back end that Xcode uses for app from Apple and other development tools use it as well. On Android, we compile to Android bytecode. And this is the standard thing that you do for Android. And that means that when it goes onto the device, when the user runs it, the Android operating system will then convert it from Android bytecode to machine code and uh, that is then optimized for that device. And it builds native executables for every supported flat platform. Now with web apps, you've really got two options for deployment. You can deploy a standalone web app, which basically means you've got a app compiled to machine code that you can put on a server. It's got a web server built into it. You don't need to, to add another web server. It's got everything you need. Or you can deploy to Zojo Cloud. Zojo Cloud's great if you don't want to deal with maintaining your own web server or securing it. It's one-click deployment right from the Zojo IDE. We've got uh, SSL built in, we have several layers of security, and we've got a load balancer to make it easy for your app to support however many users you need. So if you've got your own servers, standalone is a great solution. If you don't wanna hassle with having to set up and maintain a server, Zojo Cloud's a great solution. Well, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, go to Zojo.com. There you can learn about Zojo. You can create an account and download Zojo for free and start your, on your way to building your own apps. And follow us on Twitter at Zojo. Thanks.